بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم Welcome audience to the latest Talk in Deen podcast I'm your host Majid and I have uh, my co-host with me brother Shaz and also we have a, a special guest who uh, for security reasons we cannot mention his name uh, it's a brother who's calling from from India Assalamu alaikum brothers Waalaikum salam And today's topic, uh, as you may have uh, gathered audience, um, it's going to be about the recent uh, incidents and events that are going off in, in India. Hence why we've, uh, we've got a, a brother who's an, an activist who is uh, you know, willing to come on air uh, to share his views with us. And uh, what we see actually is uh, you know, around the world, we can see that for a while now, Islam and Muslims have been under attack. Uh, we see the rise of populism and nationalism. You know, there's guys like Trump, um, Bolsonaro, and uh, people like Modi coming into power. And that actually, this also, uh, in a way, uh, shows the sentiments in their societies. Uh, because what we, what we see is that when people have a, like an ultra-nationalist type of uh, politics, then there's always uh, some internal enemy that has to exist in order to... Uh, be able to first come into power and uh, and in the process people are actually being conditioned to do this and in regards to the BJP we know that uh, you know they have a, a history of uh, anti-islamic uh, agenda uh, in reality that is their origin that's the reason why they exist but what we have what we do see we see that uh, in recent times matters have escalated to unprecedented levels um, you know a few months ago we saw the revocation of article 370 in kashmir and uh, and also we see uh, the recent bills that are being passed in the uh, in the indian government um, and this really has escalated matters quite a bit and uh, the brother uh, who's speaking from uh, from india inshallah ta'ala we will uh, he is actually uh, knows a bit more about kashmir as well so we'll get some some in depth knowledge in that respect Um, so, so f- first question really is to our brother in India, um, bro. What is it, what exactly is is going on in the, in India at the moment? So actually, so from recent, from the time when the BJP came into power, they started the, their first step was to target the Muslims. So this time last month they passed a bill, the Citizenship Amendment Act bill. So it was passed by the Parliament of India on 11th December 2019. According to this uh, act, they can provide citizenship to non-Muslims fleeing from the persecution from Pakistan, Afghanistan, Bangladesh, according to them. But according to me, I think the minorities right now are safer in Bangladesh, Pakistan than in India. But I think minorities from Pakistan, Afghanistan, they don't need to come to India. This act is totally, fundamentally discriminatory. Even uh, it is totally against their, even it is against their own constitution. According to their article 14, they have a total of 414 articles in their constitution. According to the article 14 of Indian constitution, the right to equality, it's totally violating that article. So actually what they are doing is they are replacing the constitution of Ambedkar, the f- formation of Uh, Indian constitution was done by the Ambedkar, B.R. Ambedkar. Uh, so they are replacing it gradually with the with the constitution of Savarkar and Golwalkar, who were the persons who belonged to the RSS. This is a big step towards their Hinduta ideology, and I call it Triple H ideology. That is Hindu first, Hindi first, and Hinduta first, making India a great Hindu nation. So this is their ideology. Okay, so Han, I mean, what we can see is uh, a lot of discussion uh, online. Certain new people that uh, who um, are against what's happening, even if they may be coming from other backgrounds, uh, whether they're from uh, Hindu backgrounds, even is that you know one thing they they're trying to promote is saying, look, uh, Hindu, uh, the Hindu constitution is a secular one, you know. Uh, but what we can see, like you're saying, brother, is that. Um, It's becoming more of a a, a Hindu a nationalist nation, a state, uh, just for Hinduism and Hindus. Yeah. So actually, what they are doing there, their thinking is that the, uh, India was a great nation. It was fully 
full of Hindus, then after Mughals came, then after British, so they feel like their Hinduism was somehow lost uh, between those two eras. So they want to make this Hindu nation, according to them, a great nation again. Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, it's not too different to the uh, Israelis, uh, where they have have this uh, mentality of making uh, Israel uh, great again. Uh, But, you know, in regards to on the ground, you know, we see a lot of uh, uh, images and and videos of, uh, you know, some some really, uh, uh, some more disturbing scenes of the way the authorities are clamping down on on, on the Muslims in the, I think it's the Jamia uh, University, uh, and in general. So, I mean, on the ground, is it even worse than what we're seeing here in the West? Yeah, yeah, sure. It's totally, I mean, the real situation is more heart-wrenching. Whatever you are seeing on the media, like the fourth pillar of democracy, that is media, it's in total control under the BJP. So whatever BJP wants them to show, they show that thing. So there have been so many killings from past uh, two weeks. So where uh, right now where I am, there were almost uh, more than 15 people were killed last week. So nothing has been shown on the uh, media right now. There, there are so many protests going on, uh, millions of people coming out of... Uh, there are almost more than 20 crore uh, Muslims in, in India. So they are protesting, they are doing their best. So now they are understanding what they have to do. But the main thing is they need guidance, they need leadership, which they lack. Salam, uh, brother. Uh, one of the questions I wanted to ask is... <coughs> Uh, I can understand where in certain countries a lot of the media is controlled but in places like India where there's so much technology available why is it so hard that uh, information uh, they, they, they're trying to curb the information I, I'd be shocked that they'd be able to try and control the media at that kind of level um, it just seems like places like India China I can I can understand how the, how the media operation controls things but uh, in places like India I would find it a lot easier for information to get out of what's actually going on there. Yes, actually first when BJP came into power in 2012, so first of all what they did is they started controlling the media, they started corrupting the media. Media is the basic pillar of democracy. First step they did after coming into power was to have total control over media. So as, as they controlled the media, they started controlling the people. So whatever the people see on televisions and all, they think that's 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 the reality. But in actual, that's not what's been shown on the media. If any media media shows some anti-BJP news or criticize BJP, next day we hear that the channel has been banned. Wow. Yeah, I was uh, actually reading yesterday there was a um, a journalist who uh, I think wrote something against and. Uh, he was, uh, you know, his position was lost. He was, he was basically sacked. So we see that this is happening. So, you know, in regards to going back to uh, the NRC and the CAA bill, uh, in effect, what this is really doing is, is, is stripping Muslims of uh, their Indian nationality, isn't it? And then just, just uh, setting up detention centers um, and, you know, basically making them stateless because a lot of these people, uh, okay, there's an argument that there are those people that are coming from um, Bangladesh, Afghanistan, Pakistan I mean to be honest with you how many people actually come and seek asylum in, in India I'm not sure the numbers but what it would seem is that from, from my point of view is actually these are the first steps where initially it looks like it's dealing with foreigners but in reality it's going to come to the stage where what they, what they hope anyway is where it's going to start affecting those Muslims that are even born in India that even have citizenship yeah, see, this uh, Citizenship Amendment Act, this is a big step. They're a big step towards the Hindu ideology. So, like I said, they I feel like they are soon going to replace the Indian school, secular constitution with the constitution of uh, Golwalkar and Savarkar. So, this thing, CAA, NRC, this is just to... Uh, actually, they achieve two goals with, this, with these things. First of all, they... Um, 
they uh, now they know how to divert the attention of people i mean they are facing so many things right now they have economic crisis right now like their gdp is the worst from past two decades their un- unemployment rate is the highest from past four decades so they are able to divert the minds of the people so secondly they are achieving their goal of hindutva so first of all their step is to remove muslims from the india then first muslim then they are going to come to the uh, christians then jews and all so this is same as israel like you said what they are doing they are actually i i think they are inspired from the same ideology yeah of course i mean uh, we know that uh, israel passed uh, the the law didn't they that israel is a jewish nation um and that was a big issue because prim- primarily everyone else who isn't jew is uh, uh, is like a second second class but also what it meant was that Jew, Jews worldwide for them Israel is a home they have a right to that land even though they've never been there and they're not from there whilst the people that have been living there for centuries their rights uh, overnight are taken away so so bro in regards to uh, what's, what what they're doing with the the CAA bill um and what we saw with uh, article 370 in kashmir yeah do you think there is a, do you think there is a link where you know for example uh, would it be too far fetched to think that you know we see that at some stage if they're not already doing it, and inshallah i'll get some we get some more information from you uh, but the, what they're doing in kashmir we can see that the plan is to change the demographic of that of that area um and to start to populate it and and start to make settlements so like you said purely in a israeli fashion in where like they do in the west bank um where they will now change the population uh, from a muslim majority to one where it will be a hindu hindu majority and maybe in the future they will even then take the case to the un and say okay now can you do that referendum that was promised in i think 47 to see whether uh, jammu kashmir wants to remain with india or whether it wants to be independent or go to pakistan but do you think that also if all these people that are being given or will be given indian citizenship do you think that uh, there's maybe a link the fact that they want to be then moving these people towards uh, jammu kashmir yeah actually if you will see the order they are doing these things like first uh, removing the article 370 then uh, they came to the article 35a then babri majid then this citizenship amendment so they make a logical sense we can clearly sense that where they are heading towards so now how this is this act is like in kashmir article 35a was a biggest barrier so it was a i mean it was like a, a safeguard for kashmir they w- were not able to a- they were not able to implement any of their bills passed in their constitution in our state so we had our own constitution whatever they what whichever bill they were going to pass uh, into their lok sabha and rajya sabha so it had to be passed through our constitution through our legislature then it could be implemented on our state now they have removed the, this barrier so they can do now whatever they want and they have split our state into two union territories so now they have direct central control over the kashmir and the ladakh region so they can do whatever they want so it's a bit worrying not so, a bit i mean it's uh, so actually this kashmir this kashmir <coughs> is the majority the only majority state a muslim majority in uh, the whole india so i sense that Uh, they are going to bring the hindus and all from afghanistan and pakistan so they are going to make them settle in kashmir so they are going to turn this majority into the minority muslim minority okay so, and 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 you think they're going to use this uh, it's easier to use this because what they'll be saying is these are are, are refugees and poor people that are being persecuted in those lands so it's easier for a the international community to swallow Uh, and it's easier for them to uh, 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 portray this as a victory in the media as well that they're looking after people as opposed to in reality what they're doing is persecuting muslims by removing them from their land and replacing them with hindus i mean see if they are able to uh, 
they are able to make people agree that black is white and white is black. Yeah. So yeah. why can't they do that? I mean, they passed the CAA bill, which is totally discriminatory bill. It totally violates all of their basic rights. So why can't they do that? Yeah. I think the hope is the fact that, because uh, even um, I'll read in some articles where he was talking about that, what tends to happen is that you'll see initial demonstrations and protests, mm. but a lot of these are led by students. And what will happen is that <clears throat> over time, students need to go back to studies. Mm. Uh, so the hope is the fact that, you know, if nobody else, if it's not like an organized or unified type of uh, a protest, what will tend to happen is going to die out unless someone else isn't going to, to take this up. But bro, so um, what's happening in Kashmir at the moment? Because to be honest with you, uh, I know obviously you've got your, your personal links to, to that land. But for our from our point of view here in the UK... Uh, there's nothing, nothing coming out of Kashmir now. Uh, and what happens is, you know, Muslims, um, I certainly I can say, you know, in my experience, in experience the ones that are, that are around us in the UK is the fact that we tend to have short memories and we sort of like, we're led by the media. Uh, so if the media wants to show one particular story, we'll be hot about that. And then it will... Uh, then it will shift to another story and it will take the old, the old story off the off the shelf and people forget about it. You know, so initially we saw uh, a lot of demonstrations even here in the UK because a lot of the people here uh, that I know and even for, for myself, my parents, they're from Azad Kashmir. So, you know, there's that personal link there. But other than that, there's absolutely no news or, or nothing coming out of Kashmir now because obviously the internet ban's still there. So, so tell us w- what's going on. Give us some in-depth, uh, you know, uh, knowledge of of the situation now. So, actually, you might be knowing now it's the fifth month of communication blackout in Kashmir. Subhanallah. So, this um, uh, this land has been totally isolated from rest of the world. Like I said, they have the complete control over the communication, internet, calling and all. I haven't seen my parents' face myself from last five months. Subhanallah, bro. My, my, my mother called me after 90 days. And I heard her voice after 90 days. And it was just for a minute. And she called me from a police station. And all that she said was, you, you, you be okay, we are okay here because they don't want me to worry about them and rest of the time she cried i can't explain my pain i mean right now i have tears in my eyes yeah bro i can uh, i can so of appreciate that obviously you know we're not yeah. not going this, to this is not on, this is not only my story this is the story of 8 million kashmiris so kashmir has been totally isolated from the world no education no business no congregational prayers in the jami masjids more than two billion dollars economy lost from the past five months. More than two lakh jobs lost. We we are just somehow surviving. Alhamdulillah to Allah. Subhanallah, bro. But you know, um, uh, it even seems that uh, it's not just us that are not getting any information out there as well. But uh, it seems like there's not a lot of news even within India because yeah, you know, I, I was wondering whether whether you know because initially when it happened and the internet was sort of like uh, disconnected. The sort of views I had was that, you know, uh, this is going to be one step towards changing the, the demographic in the sense like, you know, we know that even when the media was there, you know, we know from uh, the past what atrocities were, were you know, uh, happened within Kashmir to the, the, the people there. And, uh, you know, we've actually voiced them where we previously even in videos on this. But, you know, we were, we were just worried the fact that, you know, if that was when there was media and internet, and the fact that there's no coverage now, whether now there are steps being taken there to, uh, you know, uh, remove people, to shift them out, to shift people in, because nobody knows what's happening. Yeah, actually, see, they, were, they said that they, uh, this plebiscite, this whatever they are going to do, they said this uh, for the development of Kashmir. They said this article of plebiscite side is a barrier between Kashmir and its development. But the reality is Kashmir is more developed without India. We have best lifestyle in the whole of the India, the rest of the India. Millions of Indians sleep on the streets. They can't even afford a single time food. They can't feed them. What are they talking about our development? We have the best education. We have best lifestyle there. 
So we okay. had a great economy. So first of all, they broke our backbone of our economy. That is our tourism. Tourism was a major uh, source of our e- in economy. So first of all, they broke the economy. Then they came to the education system. Now, whatever. Now it's like jail, totally a jail. So you know, in regards to uh, <clears throat> when the issues in Kashmir occurred five months ago, right? Uh, maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong here, but in regards to the reaction that we've seen um, in the uh, place like the Jamia and uh, um, the is it ULM the one of the universities, um, but or ILM I think. But but anyway, the the point I'm saying is that what we see is protests. Uh, the Muslims have sort of like also start to vent their anger and stuff like this, but. Uh, am I would I be incorrect to say that when the issue happened in Kashmir, the people didn't respond in this way? Is first, firstly, is that true? And if it is true, why do you think that um, the Muslims have sort of come up in arms to a certain degree after the NRC uh, and the CAA bill, whilst the same reaction didn't occur when India did what it did in in Kashmir? So actually, see, first of all, they came to the Kashmir. So the Indian Muslims thought it's just a land, disputed land. So maybe they can resolve this this way. Then they came to the Babri Masjid, and Babri Masjid was never a case about the land. It was the case about the justice and injustice. Now, when they came to the NRC and CAA, now people started realizing, no, this is about Muslims. This is not about mm-hmm. any disputed land or any communi- community. This is about the Muslims. This is about their ideology. So now every Muslim right now, they are totally against now BJP and their ideology. But that, uh, first of all... So I, I, had a, I had a quick question. Uh, it's interesting point that you just said that, that all the Muslims are now against BJP so where is this frustration being channeled into is it being channeled more towards looking for an Islamic solution or are they playing into the hands of people like the Congress party and what's the Congress party's stance on all of this and where are where are they being vocal and what is their position clearly on this or any other political party or are there, are there new political parties now going to be in the furore? Uh, this, this is something that is quite interesting. I'd like to hear your opinion on Yeah, see, first of all, these uh, the Muslims of India, they're not finding for any Islamic solution. So, and in this uh, Congress thing, I don't find Congress any better than BJP and all. So, uh, in comparison to BJP, Congress was... Uh, 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 BJP is more violent than Congress. Whatever BJP do, it do, does does on the face. Wow. So Congress used to do it behind the curtains, and Muslims were not able to sense that from past seventy years. Yeah. So this BJP now they have removed the curtain. They are doing it right on the right in front of the people. So the policy is exactly the same. It's just the style that they adopted on how to carry this out against Muslims. Yeah, but you you see this. Um, I mean, we had the general election here in the UK and, you know, it was the Conservatives versus Labour. Uh, And, you know, if you really think about uh, Labour's uh, policies, they weren't really Islamic such. Or you see, for example, you have the Democrats and you have the Republicans in in America. So what you see is that, uh, in fact, it may well be that uh, sometimes that the, the one who's more aggressive is actually better for you. Because they uh, they show you their true colours, whilst the one who smiles but then stabs you in the back mm. is far more dangerous because you know it keeps the Muslims in a, in in a state where you know uh, they've been neutralised, mm. you know, and they just they're used actually for their own politics. So, bro, you know, in regards to the uh, the Indian government, the, the media in India, right? Because some of these, you know, here when you see snippets of these. Uh, Indian chat shows and there's like that Goswami guy and people like this and, and, and these people make me sick to be honest with you right but you know how has it, how is it the fact that the media and maybe maybe we've got this wrong here but how is it that the, the BJP government and the media has been successful or we can you know whether or whether they have or not in portraying that the Muslims are actually invaders in India and have no place in India whilst if somebody was to go to the history books 
they will see a long history of Islam and Muslims in India. How, how have they been able to do this? Or is it just shown that this is the case and in reality it isn't? Yeah, actually, if you see this whole thing, Islamophobia thing, it's at the peak right now. So the media has the main part in the Islamophobia and spreading the Islamophobia. First days in India, I felt like they started um, vanishing the Islamic history from the books, from the reality. They started like this Babri Masjid, which was built by the Mughal Emperor Babur. They started demolishing these things. They started portraying them like they were invaders. They were the, the most violent beings. So they, they started making movies in which when, wherever you will see the Bollywood movie, the villain is with the beard and with a head cap. Yeah, we see this so here. It, cre- it, it brainwashes the people. They start, it's not from the past five years. This is right from the partition. They started doing this. Subhanallah. Yeah, I mean, the thing with the, the Babri Masjid is important. I mean, I was speaking to the, the guys here before we, we started recording. And uh, I remember 92 clearly, uh, what happened in 92. Um, and, you know, at that, that time... I see that the reactions are not just of, of Muslims uh, in India, but worldwide against what happened at Babri Masjid. But what I was, what I was talking to the guys here, and I was saying that what's actually what we've seen is we've seen in a change of attitude globally to Islam and Muslims in the way that there's things that can that people can do now or say now that they couldn't do before. And, and uh, an example I gave was, you know, I remember in those days where. In places in Kashmir and stuff, you'd hear of you'd hear of cases where the you know the the Indian forces are surrounding a masjid because some some you know freedom fighters or militants, whatever you want to call them, were holed up inside the masjid and they wouldn't go inside the masjid because obviously this is like a desecration of of a religious place. But now we see that they'll just blow up the the mosque and and also the fact that the attitude to in ninety two to the Babri Masjid and to now when the when the judgment was given the fact that all the land not even a quarter but all the land was going to be given to the hindu trust and the muslims can find another area uh, and build a mosque and what we saw is we saw even some muslims that came out and were like well you know it's a better ruling it's uh, you know it's better than nothing and the issue is resolved it just so seems that it really does show and illustrate how the situation has worsened um, and it also shows that the attitudes of the Muslims where before maybe they f- they did feel more Indian and they felt like they could get justice through the system whilst now it's a case where the Muslims are, are maybe realizing now that this system will not give uh, justice and honor to Islam or Muslims and for the meantime we best just accept the situation as it is. Uh, I mean, with the Babri Masjid issue, like you said, it's not about the land. This is a fact that, you know, on dubious claims, because this has not been proven, on dubious claims that there was a, a, a mandir, there was a temple that was there and it was destroyed and a mosque was built. This basically gives a template now, the same way they're renaming uh, places uh, in India from uh, Islamic names or Muslim names to Hindu names. This gives them now the permission to go and uh, deal with any old uh, uh, building which <coughs> represents Islam and Muslims on the basis that this was built by invaders. Yeah, like I said, like you said, it it, it was never the case of land. It was never the case of that two point five acre land. It was the case of what is right, what is wrong, what is truth, what is false. It was about the rights of the people. It was about the history. So like I said, they are vanishing now. They are changing the names of the places from Muslim names to the Hindu names. Even they are now in the Kash- Kashmir. So we ha- we have a place called Islamabad. Like it's similar to the Islamabad capital of Pakistan. So they renamed, renamed it into the Anatnag. And we had a stadium, Bakshi Stadium. Last month they changed the name of that stadium to the Atal by watch by stadium so they are doing it everywhere they don't want a single grain of, of muslims on uh, in in the whole india okay bro so you know my next question is something which when speaking to muslims here 
some people uh, challenge the, the, the situation, um, what's happened to Muslims in India. And what they say is that they say that what the the latest incidents and, and what's been happening since partition, like you mentioned, this is not a, a five-year-old thing. This is something that's been going on for decades. What they will say is that this justifies Muhammad Ali Jinnah's uh, uh, vision of having a separate independent country for Muslims. I have my own views on this. What are your views on that? Uh, if you ask my views, I think the, na- the two nation theory was good. I think according to my opinion, I think two nation was, I mean, if, if it, uh, it would have been more calm, calmly, it, it would have been done more calmly than the two nation theory was good. So uh, Mohamed Ali Jinnah was a man of great vision. He sensed that what's going, what's going to be the, be the future of Muslims in India. So it's the matter of opinion. So what do you think, we can't agree on the same. So according to me, two nation theory, Jinnah was totally uh, uh, true about the future of the Muslim. Like he said, if you won't join us today, then rest of the life you will be spending to, um, your loyalty to India. Right now, uh, still the Muslims are being asked whether you are Indian or not. Indian Muslims are being asked everywhere whether you are Pakistani or you are Indian. They still feel like, no, he is a Pakistani. He's having a beard, he's having a head cap, his name is Muslim, so he belongs to Pakistan. Yeah, bro, I mean, uh, we we also asked whether we're British or Muslim as well, so this is something which yeah. uh, is not alien. But Shaz, what's your opinion well, on... Uh, I mean, one of the, uh, the, the tricks or the plans of the colonials was to destroy and rip apart India, not only based on uh, ethnicity, but also on the, uh, um, uh, the the religious lines as well. If we actually look at the numbers, just the sheer numbers of Muslims, if you look in, if you, if you take Pakistan or you take the amount of Muslims that are in India or in, in Bangladesh, there's not that much bigger difference of how many Muslims you have in that area and how many Hindus there are in that area. So for a weakened state or a weakened state of Muslims, yes, it makes sense to have uh, those partitions and those lines in place. But the, the actual strength of the weakness of the Muslims was created by, on those lines. When you, have, when you split the country up and you take a vast majority of the Muslims and put them into a different country, you actually weaken the position of the Muslims. So the Muslims were never weak in India. The weakness only occurred when the colonialists did their best to split this country into those lines and make India a more majority Hindu nation and then take the Muslims away from there. So my argument is slightly different that this was done deliberately to distill the power base and actually give more power towards Hindus. So I agree with you what you're saying that since partition, these plans were laid down since partition. Had this not taken place, the Muslims would be near enough the same as the Hindus are there. And they would have a, a sense of strength and power in the region. Now that's been taken away completely from them. This is why they've fallen into those traps. And as you've mentioned, they're being asked whether they're Indian or they're Pakistani or whatever they are. But uh, again, this is shows why that in foresight, may, people may have think it's a, it's a good thing. But in reality, Muslims are not unified. Muslims are split apart and the best way to do this is always to chop up pieces of land and say, you know, this is not a a Muslim piece of land. This is now part of India or this is part of a a separate state. Okay, so basically what you're saying is that if if you were to look at the numbers of Muslims in Pakistan, Bangladesh and India, I mean, if you were to... It's over 500 million. 500 million, okay. Yeah, Yeah, subhanAllah. So, yeah... um, and then they will pro- so you know, uh, le- leading on to another question, then, uh, uh, brother, is at the moment there's two hundred million Muslims in India, right? And obviously, compared to the uh, the rest of the population, it's it's uh, I think about fourteen percent. Um, but is is the reason that the Muslims are so uh, widespread amongst uh, in India, or why is because two hundred million people is a lot of people? Why why is it that? Even though having a population of 200 million, we see the, the humiliation um, on a daily basis. Uh, wh- why is that? Wh- wh- what's the reason? Uh, first main reason is that they lack the education. They are being deliberately kept 
undeveloped in, in the undeveloped areas they, they are not being provided with good education so education is the main thing they don't know the majority of the muslims here uh, they don't know about their history they don't know about where they came from they don't know about uh, the history of moguls and how they used to rule the whole india so and main thing is they lack the education they they don't have the knowledge they don't have the leadership they have a few uh, two three couple of uh, leaders right from the whole of 20 crore people they have a few couple of uh, muslim leaders like asasuddin uwaisi so so first thing and uh, another thing is that india is a very big country uh, it's the seventh, seventh largest country and 1.5 billion people so in comparison to the uh, almost 1.3 billion people and 20 crore so it's somehow good unbalancing okay subhanallah and, and also you, you mentioned uh, a few days ago uh, maybe you can just touch upon this uh, about you you mentioned about the drugs issues and stuff like that in kashmir yeah yeah see they they have oh, they have used so many weapons in kashmir like uh, they used rape as a weapon like you might have heard about the kunan poshpura now they are engaging our youth into the drugs they are giving them free drugs they are involving them free drugs then using them those uh, youths for spying on the militants or mujahids we call them mm-hmm. so they are they are then they are comp- they are compiled towards the drugs and all these stuff alcoholism so it's yeah. and so this porn addi- addiction drug addiction these are the weapons of uh, christians jews whatever uh, all all those countries like us like it's happening in Israel, they are engaging all those Muslim youth into the things of which totally destroy them. So they are using the same weapons in Kashmir now. Subhanallah. And, and also, um, you know, what, what's your opinions on the fact that, because we see that from the time of Vajpayee, the, the ties between uh, the US and India have strengthened. And we see uh, with uh, Howdy Modi and, uh, you know, his reception uh, within America and the way the relationship is portrayed. Um, I mean, we can see that in one way, a strong India um, benefits America in the sense that it counters uh, the rise of China. Um, So, I mean, do you have any views on this? Yeah, see, first of all, I don't have any expectations from any of the superpower non-Muslim country. So, see, India is the hub, is the world trade hub. It's a very big business trade hub. So, no country want, uh, wants to cut off the ties, trade ties with India. So, they have so many things, imp- they import so many things from US, some from UK and all. So. It's about it's all about the domination, power, and money. That's correct. I mean, <laughs> I read once that uh, the Indian middle class is bigger than the whole of Europe put together, which is about three hundred and fifty million people. So, from an economic point of view, why would any of the superpowers or international uh, uh, countries that trade with India want to rock this boat? In fact, this is a a big avenue for them in terms of uh, for capitalism to increase its uh, markets uh, when it looks at it globally. M- one of the areas I was concerned about is so if you're you're talking about this is how they're distracting the Muslim youth uh, with all these elements that you you mentioned and obviously like I said drugs and and, and pornography are d- disturbing elements that that you've mentioned. What type yeah. of what type of solutions are Muslims looking at? What type of solutions are Muslims now then talking about or discussing? You know, what's what's being discussed on the ground in terms of how they're going to get out of this, or are they just resigned to the fact that this is how it's going to be now for them? Yeah, being a Muslim, we believe in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Iya kana abdu, iya kana stain to Him. We worship and to Him we ask for help. But my faith is that if we'll turn back to, towards the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and follow the path of, of our pro, um, beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that's where our success belongs. We have, to, we have to research on how a single man, how all those Sahaba had so great influence over the societies. So we have to start 
and even if like the people like you and me we can sense all these things what's being done with our society so it's our it's our duty right now to spread the to engage the youth into uh, to turn them back towards the path of uh, prophet muhammad sallam towards the path of our deen so th- this is the main solution so secondly if you are, will ask me about the solution of these things the see the uh, first of all the solution of this problem is that the all major muslim countries have to mediate in this issue i don't have any expectation from any non muslim country the muslim countries have to play a role in this this thing i don't feel un is going to take any firm step no country wants to cut off like i said with ties with india as india is a trade hub right now so the arabia could play an important role in this but i don't think they want to do that i don't have any expectations from any of the usa or europe or whatever they are so they have to meet it it's their duty is the duty of those leaders is the duty of imran khan is the duty of erdogan is the duty of all those leaders to meet it in the issue of kashmir yeah i mean uh, the thing is um, and what makes it difficult bro is uh, is the fact that certainly you've got some one thing completely correct is the fact that you know we we should not have any expectations from the from the non muslim nations because this is not even on a from a realistic point of view uh, even if you by gauging the reality this is something which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us 1400 years ago <coughs> that we cannot take them as as awliya as protectors as friends etc but the problem here is the fact that um, even the the muslim nations that you, that we're saying the reality is is i mean we can just look at the attitude of uh, some of the nation and the leaders towards china for example where you know i mean imran khan is what he is but even even his hardcore supporters and i, I know a few even when speaking to them and and when uh, you know i mentioned to them that when he he was interviewed and and they asked him about the issue in east Tur- turkestan and uh, his response was that uh, he didn't even know what was happening there and and even even his hardcore supporters were finding it difficult to try to uh, make excuses but the, the reality is is my brother is the fact that we see the we see how the the capitalists and uh, the the western colonialists how they they colonized our lands but the reality is is even when they left they didn't leave you know even if they are, may have uh remove the the colonization from a physical point of view the reality is that the minds of the muslims are still colonized and the leaders that we may be looking towards the reality is is that even those leaders are not referring to the what you said which is islam and the quran and the sunnah and a lot of the leaders have actually been placed there so you know it makes a situation one where um the change has to come from from within and has to come from a ground level because <clears throat> the people at the top you know unfortunately the reason why they are at the top is because they they uh, serve a particular agenda and unfortunately that agenda isn't one which benefits islam or or benefits the muslims uh, but going back to your point that you made and i think subhanallah it's a very valid point um, and it's is 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 bang on the fact that you know what we need to do as muslims we need to return to islam we need to return to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we need to look back at the seera at the life of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam at the life of the companions and through this we need to derive our solutions because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that in the messenger we have the best example and also that you know in our issues and in you know the things that we disagree upon we have to revert back to the quran and the sunnah and maybe maybe in india uh, sooner or later like you mentioned before the fact that these things are happening one after another one after another maybe now is a time that the muslims in india will start to see this clearly now that this isn't a bjp and a congress matter this isn't an issue to do with land or a or a building this is actually an issue to do with islam and kufr and the sooner people appreciate that then the sooner they will start looking to ways of trying to resolve the issue rather than being played by like the same political parties as pawns in their own games yeah we have to 
see uh, and these so our Sahaba and our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We have to make them our role models. We have to follow their ways. We have to see how they used to influence the society. We have to see how they used to dominate, how they dominated everything. Everything was in their control. We have to turn back to the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to ask him for the help. And then after, first we expect help from the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then towards the major, then we look towards the major Muslim nation, especially Pakistan. So Pakistan has been a, back, a support, a main support for Kashmir. But they have also done lots of mistakes in the past which they could have uh, neglected and Kashmir wouldn't have been right now where it is and regarding the Muslims of India first of all they have to leave all those things uh, they, whatever they have between them like they have to come to the common terms whatever is common between them they have to first follow those leave aside whatever they have the differences between them they have to unite they have to educate themselves they have to improve their education system they have to educate uh, they have to learn about their religion they have to research about their religion they have to improve the knowledge of the religion they have to see how they have to engage their youths into the politics I mean, they are not going to form any uh, d different Islamic state. They have to be in the India. India is their country. So what what do they have to do? They have to engage their youths into the politics. So they have to make a little small small communities, uh, maybe a communities of uh, uh, a thousand thousand people. So. They, the leaders of uh, Muslim leaders here in India, they have to look after the education system mainly. So, and they have to engage their youths into the politics. They have to form the new parties. They have to participate in the elections. But the thing is, bro, is uh, you, you, we, you know, we, we talk about going back to the 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 the, the, the methodology or the template that the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the, the Sahaba. Uh, put in place but the reality is is you know as uh, a famous saying of uh, Umar ibn Khattab anhu, when he said that um, something on the lines that you know Islam uh, gave us honor Islam made us great uh, if we look to anything else other than Islam we will find nothing but humiliation and I think that's that's the issue obviously this is something maybe for uh, uh, another discussion but the, uh, you know a longer discussion but the reality is is that you know uh, what we what we're saying here is that we we want to find uh, the solutions from within a, a secular uh, framework and within a secular system, and the reality and and as we see around the world, as we see uh, in India as a prime example that you you can have a, a huge population of Muslims, but the reality is is that to ex expect a change from within that same secular system which is allowed the BJP to come into power which has allowed what's happening in Kashmir which has allowed all these things to happen to expect something from this is naive to be honest with you and look at look at look at uh, as, as Brother Maj has just mentioned as well look at what it re in reality happens when you have a secular platform if they don't like certain rules and regulations they don't care you know the whole issue of Article Three Seventy UN etc. No one cared. When it eventually came, push came to shove, they've done enough work on the ground. They went into Kashmir. Who cared about the rule of law? They break their own laws. What suits them? It, there was no issue of it's haram, it's halal, or anything like that. It was a question of we don't care anymore. So enough work had been done to dupe the minds of Muslims globally. And obviously they had the support and backing of, you said it yourself, we have no expectations from non-Muslim countries and non-Muslim leaders. We have no expectations. So these countries are all in it together. They're all in it together against the Muslims, against Muslim land, and they'll never ever change. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us this in the Quran, that rank hatred has been uttered from their mouths, but what their hearts conceal is far worse. So what they really think and what they really want to do to, do to us is something even far worse than this. So I, I can't expect any kind of solution to come from uh, a kufr system to try and resolve the problem for the Muslims. 
the only way this problem is going to be resolved is what you've highlighted yourself is for Muslims to educate themselves on referring back to Islam and looking for the solution from Islam, not from the cancer itself. The cancer will never cure us. It will never be able to cure the, the, the mindset or the situation of the Muslims. Yeah, we have to look into our Quran, into our into the lives of our prophets, into the lives of our Sahabas. Yeah, we don't expect anything from them. Like UN, it's just UN is meant for a few countries. It's only for US, it's only for UK, it's only for Germany, it's mm. only for Russia. It's not meant for Muslims. Yes. Like there are 57 Muslim nations. Can't they form a, great, a, a greater uh, organization than UN? Like they have OIC that's just mm. sitting there, well, nothing look, happening well, in OIC. Well, well, look at what happened. Uh, uh, in Malaysia, in this Malaysian conference, uh, Imran Khan was was supposed to go there, and uh, Saudi Arabia uh, summoned him to uh, to Saudi, and uh, with the uh, uh, the force of what America had given the instructions uh, to Mohammed bin Salman, and they had threatened Imran Khan to send all the the Pakistani workforce back to uh, back to Pakistan and to take all his money out from its um, uh, from its banks if he went to this conference. So the, the way America manipulates Muslims is not necessarily done uh, directly, but sometimes indirectly as well. So you're right. We need sincere leadership, sincere Muslim leadership in order to resolve the problems for the Muslim Ummah. SubhanAllah. Yeah, and, uh, and, and I think that's where, uh, inshallah ta'ala, brothers like uh, you know the brother on the call are going to be instrumental in bringing this change because if we see that uh, from the life of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam you know the dawah was on a on a, a ground grassroots level you know people were going uh, culturing people bringing them closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his uh, his commands and this is why you know uh, people like the brother are going to be more beneficial to the revival of islam than any oic or any Arab league, but bro, inshallah ta'ala, uh, bringing the podcast slowly to a a, a, a close. Uh, what do you think is the future for Muslims in India um, and, and the Muslims in Kashmir? What you know? What, what do you think the future is? The uh, the I think the, the near future, shall I say? What do you think? Uh, if we'll keep happen, if uh, this situation will continue like like the same, it's going on at the rate it's going right now. Soon we are going to see India a uh, Hindu nation with Hindu ideology. We are going to see the Muslim twenty crore Muslims into the detention camps. So we have to take the steps. Like. It's, it's mentioned in the Quran. كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَةِ النَّاسِ تَعَمَرَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْحَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ We have to... This, Allah called this Ummah the greatest community. Why? Because we forbid the evil and we uh, we enjoy the good. We have, to, we have to bring people towards the good, towards the right, towards the Islam. So it's our duty right now. It's, we have to form internal communities. Like the communities like Tablighi Jamaat and all, whatever they are doing, and I really appreciate that they are educating the Muslims about the uh, Islam. So we have to we have to give the dawah everywhere in India. Once we are back on the track on the path of the Islam, inshallah, we will find the success. Uh, and 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 what do you think? Um, or how can Muslims uh, abroad? help the, the Muslims within India because obviously this is we are we are one ummah uh, we are one body if one part of the body hurts then the, the rest feels it and comes to its aid so uh, how can uh, the Muslims uh, you know um, abroad like in UK or wherever how can we help the situation of the Muslims within India yeah you know, we have to start uh, these dawah centers in India and we have to do it just for the sake of Allah. We have to, like the uh, Muslim community in India, they are very poor. I mean, they are at the bottom. I can see that the most of the Muslims here, they live in slums. Subhan. We have to provide them free books, free Islamic books, free education. We have to prove, We have to open the dawah centers here. We have to engage the youth into the Islam. We have to make the communities. We have to link those communities with the external world. 
with the uh, with the muslim world subhanallah so is is the main solution i can find that's brilliant bro um, inshallah ta'ala um, i think on that note uh, we can sort of bring the the podcast to to a close um, what i can say is is me personally you know i've learned a lot just just with this discussion with the brother you know this the situation of uh, kashmir the situation of, in india and uh, you know it's it's one of those things that if uh, the situation if nothing is is done if nothing is done then what we're seeing now is what they would say is the tip of the iceberg what's going to follow is going to be a genocide and uh, you know and uh, and as we we know that genocide doesn't happen overnight there's a process you know and and you can say that uh, in regards to the muslims in india that process of genocide has actually is towards its latter parts because one of those one of the key stages of genocide is to demonize the the population a certain population mm. and we can see that even though the the indians pride themselves on their de- uh, democracy and secularism but in reality you know uh, they have already uh, they already have this hatred uh, for the muslims and these are normal people who you know uh, you're not talking about religious people maybe but uh, but on that note um, shaz is there anything you would like to add no i think uh, the brother covered the points um uh, what's going on um in terms of uh, globally uh, muslims need to wake up uh, and specifically as you just touched on the, the element of genocide uh, what you notice is that uh, whenever these incidents take place for example what's going on in china which is a genocide against muslims uh, what's going on in kashmir it's a genocide against muslims syria genocide against muslims you can constantly name them they're all genocides and specifically it's muslims now it's going to get to a, either a point where the whole world just becomes desensitized to what's going on and they don't care and we've already addressed that non muslim lands will not care so it's a call to muslims to wake up and realize what's happening to fellow muslims around the world and that this is specifically targeting muslims it's not anywhere else you know you might have small pockets of 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 problems taking place but they always resolved they always taken care of whereas when it's a muslim problem it's ongoing it never finishes it's never going to stop it's always it broadens it to a, the next country and then the next country so this is their solution their solution is they're still not happy the way that muslim lands are they want to cut those lands up even further and destroy us so muslims need to 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 realize what's actually taking place and this genocide is spreading further and further apart because it, a long time ago people wouldn't even thought that this this thing is going to take place in in, in india yeah. that you know that it's a great you know they always prided themselves on the notion that we're a great democratic nation we're the true dem- democratic nation of the world well here's the result of their democracy i was in contact with a brother from india another brother and um, he said i can't believe this is happening in india so i said to him i said bro look around the world it's happening everywhere and then he said actually you know what we've allowed it to happen mm. uh, but yeah brother is there, is there any any final comments that you'd like to add no actually i'm thankful for this podcast actually my final exams are going on right now but i found this podcast more important than any of the exams so <laughs> Masha, i bro, managed to get the time to for this podcast i'm really thankful for you people no, bro we, we, you. we are thankful for you you've taken a, you know a, a risk to come on May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you immensely for your work and may Allah give you success in your Ameen. exams in this life Ameen. in the hereafter and also Ameen. may Allah uh, unite you as soon as possible your with family. your family with your mother uh, with your Ameen. your father your brothers and sisters and uh, and inshallah let's let's stay in touch and uh, we can do this again hopefully when you've yeah, got when you've got less exams and uh, yeah. we can I'll really... love to do that again yeah of course because we have to be the uh voice of the voiceless yeah we have to be voice of dhamma yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> exactly my brother but uh, but jazakallah khair for your time inshallah i'll let you carry on with uh, your daily uh, routine and uh, on that note uh, to my hosts my co-host shaz and uh, our special very very special guest in uh, from india um assalamu alaikum to you guys and assalamu alaikum to all the listeners wa alaikum assalam